Okay, boom. When that happened right there, I'm like, I look at the shit. I still got on the chain. Still got my watch on the look. I'm, I'm going to start that wearing jewelry this year, but I ain't wearing my jewelry. I'm just going to wear all the jewelry we done took. Too real to this shit, boy. I was too real to Pablo, bro. Pablo used to be like, boy, there they go. Whatever. Fight. No, I ain't never took my tail. We around. Every year around, tuck this tail. I'm too real to this nigga. Shout it ain't about. Hey, this internet shit. Y'all is funny as hell, bro. Oh, my dad. Tripping. Y'all funny as hell, bro. This on everything I love. I'm outside every day. I will see y'all my location every day. Oh, no, no, no. Bro, they say it's snitching, y'all. They say for them, that's who they say he's snitching, man. That's who 21 be talking about all oh, snitch ass, red ass, get 20 red man. Pablo snitching on 21 and them PFK, man. Pablo is a snitch. I'm here to expose it all. The Roland 20 neighborhood blood street gang busted by the GBI. The alleged gang members indicted under the RICO Act. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. On the road to success, it seems some dudes be living a wild life, but to become successful and still remain tied to that life is a decision that often leads to jail or somebody getting hit up. Turns out that hood rich Pablo Juan may have caused one of those things and is fighting for his life with the other. Who was the savage in the shadows that everybody is trying to hit a lick off of? Is he really like that? And why do the police seem to think that he has something to do with the homicide of Lil Marlo? One way to find out. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Sterling Leroy Penix Jr. AKA Hood Rich Pablo Juan was born in Newark, New Jersey. But by the time he was four, he migrated to Atlanta after his father who was involved heavily in the streets had to dip from the 5-0 and go on the run. Uh, the East Coast. I was born in New Jersey. Okay, sure. Uh, Box, I used to live on Baldwin Avenue in New North New Jersey actually. Okay. Yeah, I was born there but be real like my dad was an OG, like he was on the run. I ain't gonna lie, he was on the run, so we had to pay up everything. Right. Go straight to Calm Road, and you know, went from there. Okay, so you moved on some, on some family street shit. Yeah. In Atlanta, the struggle was real for them. Money was low, but the stomachs had to be fed, and it was many of them. It was a whole family. Him, his pops, his moms, his other siblings, cousins, stepbrothers, everybody had to survive. They, I, you know, my mom was always with my dad. They had about six kids. We stayed in a three bedroom apartment, and they also we also let other people in, cousins, mm -hmm. step brother, half brother, another cousin. So you know we were thinking it was struggling on the money part. They didn't even have enough money for Pablo's basketball practice. I was so poor I couldn't really make it to basketball practice. My mom and them ain't even had the transportation to get me. When, when it's over with or get me there. Or. His father would find a better path and convert his life to the Muslim faith, even owning a mosque of his own. At the very least, it brought love to the home and everybody was brought up with good morals. I, I also was raised on a lot of morals. Like my mom and my dad was Muslim. Sadly, Pablo was around 12 or 13 when his father passed away due to health issues. So at the at a young age, you wasn't out in the streets. He was more like, was you? Was you? As, as a young, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daddy died at like 12. Okay. Daddy died at like, like 12, 13, so. With just moms trying to make ends meet, Pablo turned to the streets to hustle and secure a bag. All the kids at school had drip, but he had to rock the same gear, and that had to change. So going to school, like seeing everybody wearing the fresh Jordans, fresh Iverson, you know, um, fresh clothes and shit, wearing the same shit, like how did that affect you? Because that affects a lot of people. That's where the streets came. With that decision, his basketball days were over, and selling that good stuff at school was the new hustle. Pablo had hustle mentality in his veins. He was a smart kid, but just had bad ways. He was getting into trouble so many times that the officers started looking out for him. When he got caught in school one time with the goods, the officers patted him down, and even though everybody heard the pack rattling in his sock, the officer just pretended that he didn't hear a thing. Guess they saw he had brains, just using it the wrong way and wanted to see him do better. Oh, they caught me. even the, the officer. But RP Gentry, they caught us in school. So, you know how they feel you and they got them feel the plastic. They can hear everybody hear the plastic in your sock. Mm. Just act like you don't hear 
Oh man, so, this the officers. I'm like, damn. You had a relationship with like with the yeah, staff. Yeah. They wasn't wrong, bro. Was smart. Pablo graduated school ahead of his time by doubling up on classes, and the hustle in the streets was taking up a notch. Yeah. But I graduated early because block schedule. I ended up cutting off all the gym, the art, the all that, anything like that, taking all. You know what I'm saying? Science, social studies, math, all that. So once I got enough, um, um, whatever you call it, credits, I was good. Yeah. I oh. actually walked and everything and got my diploma. Little did he know that rap would become a big part of his life. But before superstars like the Migos and Young Thug and them blew up, Pablo Juan knew them. I've been around Shiloh Thug. I know Thug uh, personally. Migos personally, before they ever had a Versace Versace song. Skip it up, flip it. So by the time that they got in the game, Pablo being the plug in the streets became the plug for the rap industry. He was supplying everything to everybody, like even Future. His name Hood Rich Pablo Juan became certified due to his hustle and trapping in the streets. His mom nicknamed him PJ, AKA Pablo Juan, and well, Hood Rich speaks for itself with his money making talent. Pablo Juan came from my mom. She named me PJ. Hood Rich also had a double meaning to represent the brotherhood he had coming up with DJ Scream's Hood Rich imprint. The hustle was paying off, but Pablo was having too many run-ins with the law. He was going to jail, he would be back drifting designers, serving activists to his rap peers like it was routine. Right I took, but I knew everybody. If you my music, it's always coming in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because then my, so, real, so, my real brother, we was in matching the line. Yeah. Like, man, so, so when you started rapping, it was kind of easy when you wanted to be serious because everybody around you was already in position. I wouldn't say easy. It was kind of easy once they seen how, what flavor I had and they already knew me. Okay. Pablo was doing his thing, extending his rap sheet, keeping fresh, and serving the clientele. But one incident made him realize that that route wasn't going to have a happy ending. The Red Dog Police Squad would bust down his door and lump him up all over a blunt. That was enough to make Pablo check himself and realize that that life wasn't it. Well, maybe I think, boom, I ain't gonna lie, the 12 came and kicked my door, beat me up, took it. I did some digging into the Red Dog unit Pablo was referring to and found out that it stands for Run Every Dollar Out of Georgia. The Atlanta Police Department needed a strong, swift, and non, no nonsense response to this, this runaway crime. Thus, was born the Red Dog. The unit came into being during the coke epidemic in the 1980s when Atlanta, like other cities, had open air markets and almost weekly drive-by shootings. It was disbanded in 2011. Regardless, the time comes for us to reassess our mission, and the time has come to dramatically change the mission of Red Dog. Red Dog, as we currently know it today, will no longer exist. Hood Rich Pablo Juan didn't want to live that street life with the law on his back, and he delved head first into the rap game. I just put the streets all the way down and put two feet in the rap. One of the first tracks that shook the city up and turned people on to him musically was his feature on his homie Pee Wee Longway's album cut, African Diamonds. When African Diamonds hit, it was kind of like they never knew I rap. Nobody knew I rapped until I did that, and that's when it brought everybody attention. Like, boy, I heard you on that shit, boy. We got to... We finna go crazy, let do something, let do something. Pablo took off, already being known by the street dudes in the industry and being from the streets himself, his music spoke for itself. It would catch the ear of 1017 label boss Gucci Mane who signed Pablo under his then imprint 1017 Eskimo. Things were looking up, but rap beef and other street shenanigans kept putting a bad name on his career. Pablo began being known as the rapper that was an easy lick. I don't know what bro did to get dudes on his head, but they were spinning viciously on Pablo. One time videos was being posted of his watch, jewelry, and 1017 chain. Oh Ain't no more Pablo Pablo will call Cap on that one saying that he don't own them watches no more and do fronting like he took the chains as a rat. The next we know, Hood Rich is posting pics with his face lumped up saying he got jumped. The dudes responsible posted up a vid flexing Pablo's jewelry on and the internet was having a field day on bro name. <laughs> Shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't getting they shit back, man. You hear me? You want your chain back in the 50,000? Straight up. Yeah, let me see what you got, bud.
Oh, yeah, that's not hood. That's ain't backwards. Let me see. <laughs> Pablo hopped on a no jumper interview to later break down what happened. According to him, he ended up in a situation between rappers Gunu and Lil Dude basically trying to squash a little squabble, but the street code of ethics got him in harm's way. Turns out there were dudes that were beefing with him and pulled up catching Pablo with a sucker punch while he was trying to keep it kosher. Pablo says his chains dropped and they took it and dipped but never snatched it off of him. As soon as the hit the ground, picked him up and started doing this, mm. running. So when I get up and I'm ready to get in there, all I see is running. That's all I see as soon as I get up. One of the dudes that was taking Pablo chain on a greasy neck tore through the hood was Q the Fool. When asked if he could see Q and keep it moving, Pablo let it be known as smoke. Can you see Q the Fool and keep it moving or is there still like tension there? I ain't gonna ask that question, Adam. You know what the fuck going on with me. <laughs> I ain't nowhere near no hoe. That's on my mama, that's on Allah. Markel Morrow, aka Gunu, will be hit up and taken out on March 18th, 2022, after surviving a previous attempt on his life in 2019 that left him on a hospital bed fighting for survival. Pablo came out of those situations still standing 10 toes, but that wasn't the end of it. It's like dudes had a conference and decided Pablo was the one that they was going press. He was getting pressed for features in the icebox, and even 21 Savage started to claim that he had bro chain. It wasn't looking good for Pablo. I'm gonna start that wearing jewelry this year, but I ain't wearing my jewelry. I'm just gonna wear all the jewelry we done took. I'm wearing all you jewelry, man. I got so many. And with all of that going on, you think nothing more could happen, right? Wrong. Dude who used to be tight with him, RX Peso, went on live breaking down how Pablo was robbed and stripped of his chains and pole in the stew. Pablo wasn't backing down though and let everybody know he's outside. Pablo had enough. He was challenging everybody from local, international, even extraterrestrial. Any op from any block. What the f you did that I'm be scared of y'all? Ain't talking about nothing. Meet me outside right now. Bro was strong, cause mentally all of that could break you, but he kept pushing. But bad luck wasn't quite done with dude yet. Snitching rumors would hit the net, and then Gucci severed ties and started his label all over again. Pablo is a snitch. I'm here to expose it all. I'm gonna keep you in tune with the streets. That's why they call me Trap Jesus. We are not gonna let nobody keep pretending and pretending. Pretend no pack saying any this and that, and they not really that man. Pablo is snitching. Sh I just don't. I just he, 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 listen. Pablo, he, he independent now. He really like. I just listen. Everybody got down there. You can you can sign on the duct tape. You want to? I don't want no artist, bro. Hood rich Pablo Juan made it from the mud, but now that success was in his grasp. It seemed that everybody was trying to take it from his hands. What may have been the nail in his coffin for his career came on October 28, 2020. News broke that Pablo was arrested on RICO charges and was linked to the homicide of Lil Baby's homie Lil Marlo. According to reports, it is alleged that the pole recovered at the scene of Lil Marlo's homicide belonged to hood rich Pablo Juan, and it's alleged that they were doing business together. And that the victim was a well-known Atlanta rapper, Lil Marlo, NBC News says the Fulton County Medical Examiner confirmed the death. Several in the hip-hop community have taken to social media to offer their condolences, and police were still looking for the suspect this evening. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation website shows he was actually booked on the 21st of October 2020. If that wasn't bad enough, a news conference was released and details on the RICO were grim. It was a year-long investigation titled Operation Cage Dove, and Georgia law enforcement agencies came together to conduct a top secret operation to take down the rolling 20 neighborhood bloods. It resulted in 25 arrests and 21 fugitives on the run wanted for arrest. The charges included 92 counts of the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act and 59 counts of violation of the Georgia Street Gang Terrorism and Prevention Act, three counts of trafficking and other charges. Pablo got caught up in a hailstorm, man. This particular operation is dubbed Operation Caged Doves, and I'm proud to announce today that it's netting 46 RICO and gang statute indictments 
After a year-long joint investigation, 46 people have now been indicted by the grand jury of Upson County. As of right now, Blow has been locked up for nearly two years without bond, and his trial hasn't even started yet, so it's going to be a long haul for him. It's not looking good for Blow, but I hope that whatever's supposed to happen, happens, man. Until next time, stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.